gone, you are gathered together, talking about the church, and my spirit or my teachings that I've given you through the Holy Ghost, because he said with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, his teaching that is uh, inspired by God, read. To deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Now here, the church that is uh, sanctified or, or, or set free so that that person or individual can be delivered from dying and going to a Christless grave. Mm -hmm. Let me read it again. To, be, to deliver such a one unto Satan, this is what Paul's teaching is for. This is what his spirit of uh, understanding through Jesus Christ is for. Is to deliver a person from a sinful death. Yeah. Alright, read. That the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. That the spirit man. Oh, yes. Yes. Not the man that's in sin. But the spirit man who is now delivered from Satan will live with God. Yeah. Alright. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Uh -huh. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be You've a new lump. You've got to take out that sin. That's it. Give me a uh, Second Timothy chapter two. You've got to take out that sin that is in you, and this is what the Bible is for. You cannot take out sin if you don't know how. Right, okay. If somebody told you where a gold mine was. And he said, come on, we're going to go and dig out this gold. And you say, oh, okay, let, let, you get your shovels and picks and everything and get your bag to carry the gold. But then you say, just, now, do you know where it is? He said, no, I, I thought you knew. So y'all looking like fools now. Because you, you got a gold mine, but you don't know how to get it. You don't know where it is. You can't get salvation unless you know how. And this is what the Bible is for. This is what the instruction is for. All right, now pick up in uh, 2 Timothy chapter... To verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands assured, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Now, this is plain. Everyone who claims to be saved, you got to do something. Mm -hmm. Amen. You got to leave a sinful life alone. Read. But a, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. A great house means the world, but it also means in the kingdom of God, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and earth. Uh -huh. okay. Now, the context of, of gold and silver, which is precious, and wood and earth, which means something that's not precious, he connects that with some to dishonor and some to honor, right? Y'all see the connection. Verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. You've you got to purge means to cleanse. Mm -hmm. Purge means to throw up. Yes. I got to get all that out of me that made me sick. Yes. Something maybe I ate. Yes. I got to get it out. I got to purge it out of me. Mm -hmm. When you purge yourself, you can be a vessel of God to use. You can be sanctified and holy. But unless you cleanse yourself, well how are you going to cleanse yourself? You can't cleanse yourself except by the cleansing yes. of the word. Amen. The Bible cleanses us. Alright, now read. Um, and me for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness. Follow what? Righteousness. righteousness. Now there it is right there. Follow holiness. Yes. Now, if Paul said we're saved by grace and not by works, why would he tell you to live holy? Mm -hmm. Give me Romans 6 chapter. We're identifying the true church from the church of error. Mm -hmm. And Romans is 6 chapter, uh, from verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Once you've been delivered from sin, you do not go back into sin again. You don't tell lies anymore. Yes. You don't conspire anymore. Yes. You deliver from that. Yes. If you're not delivered from that, you got to examine the spirit of sin. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost don't lie. The Holy Ghost won't let you lie. Yes. Or the conviction will be so strong on you. Amen, amen. Man, you can't have no peace. Yes. Yes. I, I'm telling you about the real thing. I ain't talking about yes. the counterfeit thing. Yes. Right, right. All right, read. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? The old man is dead when you go down in the water of the grave. 
the natural old cigarette smoking, alcohol drinking, <laughs> that person is dead. Amen. Read. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, even so we also should walk in the newness of you gotta, life. You've got to walk in a new life. You've been yes. delivered. You've been set free now. Yeah. Why? How can you go back and doing the same thing if you've been delivered from that? Yes. So again, the Word of God identifies whether or not you're saved or whether or not you're not saved. Yes. Now it's just as easy to be saved as not yes. saved. When you're in holiness. The only thing, the difference is, is in self-discipline. And I, I taught y'all that many, many times. Uh, in self-discipline, you have truth. And you have obedience. And you have doctrine. Now, with the doctrine, to get obedience so that you can accept the truth or buy the truth, a person has to. I'm going to put this. Self. Self discipline is the whole key. When you hear the truth through the doctrine, obedience steps in, but obedience can't come in unless you discipline yourself. Mm -hmm. If you don't discipline yourself, you're not going to pay no attention to what you heard. Mm -hmm. Thereby, obedience is null and void. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you don't have any truth. You heard the truth, but if you don't apply the truth, mm -hmm. what good is the truth? Mm -hmm. What good is putting up a stop sign if you don't keep on running through it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when they put up the stop sign and you run it and the police catch you, yeah. he takes you downtown. Write you a ticket. You got to appear. If you don't appear, they, they issue what they call a bench warrant. Mm -hmm. They don't care whether you show up or not. Yeah. Sooner or later, they're going to catch you down the road. Yeah. Might be six months from now. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, they're going to catch you. I'm trying to let you know, anytime you have a rule, you have to discipline yourself to follow the rule. If you don't, there's a recompense for that error. So God's recompense of error is eternal destruction, but he gave us a chance through repentance. Yes. If I say, Lord, I'm sorry, right. and if it's a willful sin, I get anointed with all, and that prayer is forgiven, or the sin is forgiven and washed away, then I'm right back in the race. And there's no such thing as what I did yesterday. This is why I say don't pay no attention to what you did yesterday. It's not about yesterday. It's about what you do today and yes. tomorrow. Do today, really, because tomorrow is not promised. Yeah. But our purpose, if I can live holy today, I can live holy tomorrow right. if I wake up. Yeah. So it's, it's a part of a disciplined procedure. And brothers and sisters, you have to understand, without faith, none of this means anything. Because you don't believe. Amen. If you don't believe, you're not going to obey. And if you don't uh, uh, obey, what good is a doctor? If you don't have no discipline, none of it. The truth, none of it affects your life. So you've got to make up your mind who you are and where you are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And don't let anything turn your head away from the Scripture. Right. Make up your mind that I'm going to live holy. Holy. And the word said to live holy. Right. Now I've tried to give you testimony, a personal testimony, because I want you to understand something. I want you to understand the very importance of this book. Amen. This book is not some story yes. that sounds good, that's made for some type of psychological pickup or emotional uplift. This book is to change you so that you can be acceptable in the sight of God when he returns. Uh, what's that? Galatians 6 chapter. Pick right up in verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. 
Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. 